Question number eight says a 90 gram ice cube at zero degrees is placed in 910 grams of water at 22 degrees. What is the final temperature of the mixture? So on this one we have to use a new definition of Q that we haven't used yet. So typically we say that the, Q, that, uh, the energy transferred by heat, Q, is equal to the mass of the object times the specific heat times the change of temperature. But whenever there's a phase change, that means melting of ice or, or um, from liquid to steam or, or in the reverse, then the energy transferred by heat is equal to the, to the mass times the latent heat. So for this particular instance, it's the latent heat of melting ice. And so uh, I'm going to have those numbers posted on the blog. So if you're on the blog, you should be able to look straight down below and see uh, a chart for the latent heat. It should be at the very bottom of this particular post. If you're not on the blog, then again, you can look straight down below in the comments uh, or in, in the description of this video and click on a link to go straight to the blog. And so the latent heat for melting water is 3.33 uh, times 10 to the fifth and the unit is in joules per kilogram. And you'll notice that in this particular unit there is no kilogram times Celsius, there is no kilogram times Fahrenheit because we're not looking at a change of temperature as we are with specific heat. So um, water freezes and melts both at zero degrees Celsius and so the amount of energy it takes to move from uh, frozen water at zero degrees to a liquid water at zero degrees is 3.33 times 10 to the fifth uh, joules per kilogram. And so now let's set up our equation using Q. Uh, um, we're going to say that that uh, uh, Q1 is going to be the uh, the change the latent heat, so changing from the change from ice to liquid, and then Q2 is going to be the the warming up of the cold water. So Q1 Q1 is is the ice to cold water. So cold water. Q2 is the is the cold water cold water warming up. And then Q3, see we put all of this stuff into or we put it all into a a pot of warm water. So Q3 is going to be our warm water and it's going to be cooling down. So this is our, our equation is Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 equals zero. So uh, we're assuming that this is an isolated system and so the all of the the sum of all of the transfers of heat should equal zero. And now we want to substitute all of our, our Q's for uh, the definition of the Q, of the, of the heat change. And so the Q1 was the ice melting, so we're going to put the mass of cold water times the latent heat of cold water. And then Q2 was the cold water warming up, so the mass of cold water times the, times the specific heat of water times... Uh, times the change of temperature of the cold water. And then Q3 we said was the warm water, so we have the mass of the warm water. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this a little bit smaller. So the mass of the warm water times the specific heat of the warm water times the change of temperature of the warm water. Okay, so in all of this should be equal to zero. Now we have to solve for the final temperature. And so on all of our on all of our temperature on our change of temperatures we have to break that down into the temperature of cold water initial um, or final minus the temperature of cold water initial and so the temperature of cold water it, uh, the final temperature of the cold water is going to equal the same thing as the final temperature of the warm water and so we can just call it T final and we got to minus the T initial of the warm water and so that's our change of temperature. Okay, so because my handwriting is so bad on this app, I use my note-taking app to finish up uh, the equation. So we started off with, we had the Q1, which is the mass of the cold water times the latent heat, plus Q2, which is the mass of the cold water times the specific heat of water, 
times the change of temperature of the cold water, and Q3, the mass of the cold of the warm water, times the specific heat of water times the change of heat of the warm water. And so what we want to do first of all is we're going to isolate uh, uh, this Q1 term onto the other side of this, the, the equation. The reason for that is because we're trying to solve for final temperature. And so this doesn't have a final temperature term in it, so we're going to move it onto the other side. Uh, note that, that the initial temperature of the cold water is ice at zero degrees, and then it changes to water at zero degrees. And so the initial temperature is zero, and so the T final minus the T initial is going to equal T final. So we can get rid of T initial in this term. And so we have that the mass of the cold water times the specific heat of cold water times the final temperature plus the same thing we already had equals the, the, Q, the negative Q1. So Q2, Q1, or Q3, Q1. So the next part is a little bit um, not quite so obvious. So um, I wanted to get the final temperature on this term by itself, so I divided the entire equation by the mass of the cold water times specific heat of water. And what happens when you do that is um, you got to divide this term by that same thing. So the mass of the cold water and the specific heat, the specific heats end up canceling out. And, but you, then you also have to divide this side, and so the masses of the cold water end up canceling out. And so what you get whenever you, so you, we're getting rid of, on this term, we're getting rid of, of, let me change the color of this pen. We're getting rid of this by dividing it through, and when we divide it through, we have to divide it right here, and we have to divide it right here. And so we're left with the final temperature. The specific heats, whenever we divide them, will cancel out there. The masses will cancel out there. The mass of the cold water is the same. So we get the mass of the warm water over the mass of the cold water times the change of heat of the warm water. Uh, all of that equals the negative uh, mass of the cold water times the, times the latent heat divided by the, the mass of the cold water times the specific heat. So these cancel out as well. And we're left with this right here. And so if this step was a bit confusing, the next step is probably going to be a little bit more so. You'll notice that we can't factor out the T final yet, because if we factor it out, this, this um, term right here, this minus sign gives us a problem. So what we want to do is we want to move this away from here. So we can move this to this side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the uh, both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of mass times uh, the mass of the warm water over the mass of the cold water. So when I do that, I'll get this term. Uh, let me change this color. I'll get mass of the warm water over the mass of the cold water times the final temperature, and this part will cancel out. And then the mass of the warm water over the mass of the cold water on this side. And so then temperature final minus temperature initial can come out of the parentheses because they're just separated by they're separated by a, a, a an addition term now and so this is what we get right here um, and I had to go ahead and put another another um, picture on here from my note taking app so we'll end up getting the temperature the final temperature and the initial temperature isolated by themselves at this point do not forget to keep the minus sign on your latent heat term. I, I did not uh, carry that over, and for three attempts in a row, I got the wrong answer on the web assign, and it had to do with this minus sign. And so now we have this uh, by itself. We can actually add this to the other side of the equation, and uh, we'll get um, our final temperature times the mass of the cold water uh, over the mass of the warm water plus the final temperature and that equals what we've been going on on the right side of the equation. So now we can factor out the final temperature and when we do that you factor uh, the final temperature away from itself it's going to leave a 1 and then this is going to be left with the mass of cold water over the mass of the warm water. So we get the final temperature times the mass of the cold water over the mass of the warm water plus 1 and, and the, same, the other side of the equation stayed the same because all we did was factor. And then the last thing is we're going to divide this part to the other side of the equation. And so 
Um, here it is here, and there it is on the other side of the equation on the very bottom. And so that is our equation for the final temperature. And so if I was a betting man, and, and I'm, I'm not usually, but if I was, I would say that this is the problem that everybody is waiting for me to post. So um, I'm going to get this posted as fast as I can. When I saw this problem, I thought, gee, what is this going to take a while? But um, it's really not that bad because at this point, all you got to do is plug in the numbers. So the uh, L is equal to um, 3,000, uh, hold on. It's uh, it's 3.33 times 10 to the fifth, so it's 333,000, um, and that's joules per kilogram. And then um, the mass of the cold water was 0 0.09 kilograms, and the mass of the warm water is uh, is 0 0.91 kilograms, and the latent, uh, the the specific heat of water is 4,186 joules per kilogram Celsius. Uh, what what other term are we are we missing? The the initial temperature of the warm water was 22 degrees Celsius, and so that's all you need to solve it. Um, Go ahead and plug in your numbers. You should get an answer of 12.86042, um, and that's in degrees Celsius. And uh, the, my suggestion is, because it's it's a, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on here, is to just do a little bit at a time. So do this chunk, write it down. Do this chunk, write it down. Add these two together, write it down. Divide it by whatever you got from that. That, that should be your answer. So just do uh, chunk it up and do a little bit at a time. Now this equation can be rearranged a little bit but in my opinion the rearrangement does not make it any simpler so um, I'm not going to worry about dragging you through the rearrange how to to manipulate this further. Now I will admit uh, there may be a way to simplify it that I just haven't seen and so if you uh, if you see a way to make this a little bit simpler then uh, leave, a, leave a note below and let us know how to do that.